Now, we will be sharing a paper that has been submitted by a scholar, Shaumudi Chakravarti, Faculty Department of English, Raja Narendralal, Narendralal Khan, Women's College, Department of English. This is very important for your study. If you go through it, whatever I have said or taught or had a lecture, delivered to you all. It is more or less based on the story, the pot of gold. And here we have the opinion of the scholar to what extent is right or wrong, you judge it for yourself. Like the first point, the Titus Macias plotters. So if you think of this character of this character, which has been discussed in great details, you come to know not, uh, not much is known about the life of plotters, but you'll come to know a lot of Titus and Massilius plotters, who was born around 254 BC in Sarsina, Umbria in the present day Italy. As a young boy, he left his village and joined a traveling theater group. So you'll know him as an you will know him as plotters, what he chose to rework Menander's plays instead of just translating them. He introduced local Roman color in the plays. Though he borrowed the plot and characters from the original play, he would add his own brand of slapstick comedy and raucous humor to the play. Then, of course, he will also come to know about, know about the Roman comedy. The Roman comedy was in place by the Greek comic theater. When the Romans conquered Greece, this led to the several Latin adaptations of Greek comedy. The Roman playwrights rewrote and adapted the plays into Latin, keeping the scenes of the actions in Athens, but introducing Roman characters and topical situations. So you'll also come to know all about in details from his approach, from his research work, and from his way of understanding of the plot of gold. Then comes the introduction to the plot of God. All our, like all of Plotus has played the part of plot of God to his setting against. Yet the themes and issues he highlights are Romans. His comedies are a reflection of the society of his time. The characters he describes help the modern researchers to build an idea of the manner in which society functioned in Plotus' time. The pot of gold gives us an insight into the Roman life at that time, especially the position of women and slaves. We also get a brief mapping of the plot. Large familiar is present the prologue of the play, which sets the stage for the action that follows. It is by large familiar is that my audience is informed that Yukio's grandfather, being a great miser, had buried a pot of gold in the central hall of his house. This wealth had remained undiscovered until large familiar is in his play, for <clears throat> Euclid's impoverished condition and his appreciation of Padria. Devotion guided Euclid to the treasure. Then also, of course, you will come to know about the issues in brief analysis and the significance of the title. Megadoras' speech against dowry can be seen as Plotus's command, comment on Roman practices. It gives an insight into the low position of women held in the social ladder. Yet the pot of gold is first and foremost on satire on miserliness. Euclid's, uh, Euclid's desperate desire to protect his pot of gold makes him restless and suspicious of everyone around him. Then, if you go further, you come to know how he has analyzed the plot. The two main strands of the plot are Euclid's desperate antics to keep his pot of gold hidden from the prospect of thieves and Fadrius affair with Lysonidas. Megadrius's interest in Fadrius complicates both plot lines. Euclid suspects Megadrius' sudden interest in Fadria as an attempt to rob him of his treasure. On the other hand, the marriage proposal interferes with Lysonidas' desire to marry Fadria. So both these plot lines are interwoven into present situation. It causes tremendous laughter, and you'll experience it while you go through his 
the presentation. There are stock characters in the play. Comic drama has always used stock characters. A stock character is a character which is a common social stereotype. They are most commonly used to add to the comic elements of the play. However, some playwrights have used stock characters to serve other purposes too, such as further to the action of the play or act as false to other characters. So stock characters have typical names or qualities which represent a type and this makes it simple for the audience to make to recognize a character and place it in a in a certain context in Roman comedy. So there is nothing to fear of his approach, what he writes. Only it is that how you take his writing to be, his observation to be. So stock characters have typical names. In Roman comedy, the miser, the intelligent servant, and the braggart soldier are common stock characters. Elizabethan comedies, most common stock characters are fool, peste, custom, and bottom from Shakespeare's plays, being some examples. Yet, like plotters, Shakespeare also developed his stock characters into more than a flat characters. He gave them sympathetic aspects, which made them more some complex and interesting. Then, if we go further into his observation and his narration and research, we'll also come to know something more. And here you can also get the famous Stace, S-T-A-C-E-S observation. Then to come the woman characters. A study of plot and play shows that in all the plays available to us, there are 154 male character, characters, but only 54 females. In fact, three of his females plays don't have any female characters. Captive Pseudolos Chinumus, of course, the major reason for this is the non availability of female characters. Now, if we go further <clears throat> into the play and his way of presentation, you'll find Eunomia is a matrona and the conversation with Megadorus presents a very stereotypical type picture of woman. For instance, she says, women often talk too much. She appears twice on the stage in the course of the play. As Megadorus' sister, she shows a concern that he is not married yet and suggests a middle-aged woman for him. Now, if you go further, you'll find Fadria is a Pula, P-U-E-L-L-A. P -U -E -L -L -A. She is the object of the young hero's affection, and it it is her marriage which will signal the happy ending of the play. So the play is such that you'll derive enjoyment out of it. All the characters in the process of time were men, and so interestingly, Fadrian never makes an appearance of stage, even though we hear her screams during her labor. She is mentioned by other characters. La Familia speaks of her devotion to him. Now, if we go further into his writing, we'll find the, low, the role of La Familia. La Familia is the household god of Euclid's house. While the miserly Euclid does not worship La Familia, is the daughter of Adria, performs the necessary ceremonies. To appease the resident spirit of the house, he is the first character to come onto the stage. Since he is God, he is not visible to the characters of the play. Next, if you go further into it, you'll find soliloquies. Soliloquy is a very useful dramatic device. It is a speech by a character on stage when no, uh, no other characters are present. So the character speaking of himself to him or that he speaks his thoughts is allowed to the audience. Thus, the main aim of the uh, soliloquy is to convey a character intention. So keep that in mind, my dear readers, that whatever you are studying is not that you are um, uh, not aware of what is happening around you. The scholar over here who has written this 
is trying to make us understand what is this pot of gold several we have several sorry look is in the play at the beginning of the play you your son look informs the audience with the intention to pretend to be poor in order to get a donation this gives the audience an insight into you your true nature the slave too makes a long sorry look when he enters the sorry look not just acquaints the audience which is nature but also anticipates some twist and turns in the action of the play we have the ending which is also very interesting and here the great scholars presented the ending the ending of the pot of gold is quite ambiguous and abrupt as the ending is conjectural and it is by product of translator's anticipation it becomes <clears throat> ambiguous and even vague to some extent in a surprise ending Euclid gives away the pot of gold to Lysolaidus as a dowry for his daughter. When Ma Megadorus returns, Euclid's pot of gold, he suggests Lysolaidus' marriage to Phaedria, to which Euclid readily agrees. Euclid announces that he would be happy if the money went to someone whom it could help. He realizes that possessing the pot of gold has brought him nothing. But misery does not have a moment of peace while he had the gold. He hopes he will be able to sleep restfully by now that he has given it away. Though this in ending is not so plausible at first, since it is not consistent with Euclid's character, we have to accept it from the various surmises made by the translators and researchers. So ultimately, the conclusion of the play is a sad that Plotus is continuing influence on the world drama and not just Western, Western comic drama can be seen in the famous playwright that have followed him, mainly Shakespeare and Moliere. All the Shakespeare most famous adaptation has been from the brothers Menashe, he, do, he does draw on Plotus for his other comic plots and stock characters as well. In recent times, a musical comedy, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum is also based on plotters. So the essay is written in William. So we get the idea of whatever is written here. And we have to be very careful when we read the scholars' notes. So. His research paper is really of great importance to the students. So I request the students to follow this research paper so that there won't be any problem for them to understand what they are. And naturally, the plot of gold will become very clear to them. They will enjoy it very much. I request them that after they study my notes, and goes into details after the various conclusions that I've drawn from the notes. They must and must, must read this very paper that he has made on the plot of gold. Hardly any papers are available in the university, but there are some scholars and one of them is he who has written and made it very popular among the students. So even I want to make it popular for you all so that you all understand the importance of this very synopsis of the play that he has written to make the students understand, not to confuse them, and at the same time, make it very much possible for them to understand it clearly, whatever has been discussed in the notes all throughout. The discussion may be the kind of various factors and incidents drawn from various scholars but ultimately this very scholar who have ended up the conclusion of his discussion is to be thoroughly studied by students and request every student to follow it without missing it because it is very important for them to know what has been happening all through thank you